Hi guys, I'm Harley from Vitlil and today we're showing you how to rebuild a normal stock coil. Um, this works on pretty much any type of coil. So, without further ado, what you're going to need is two sets of grips. This is actually a multi tool. I like this because it's got a nice, fine, round bit. My uh, usual pliers from my build kit. Obviously, you're going to need your coil. This would be better to use with uh, already used coil because if not, it's going to cost you five, six, seven pound. Uh, but this is a new one, so I ain't got any old ones. Some wire. This wire is quite thick. Um, improvise with your wire, guys. You can do. I have done this with uh, Clapton's and such, but because it. Thick wire, it's quite hard to clamp down. So, especially for your first few times, I'd use just regular chemful. Something to wrap your coils around. Jigs aren't usually big enough, so you need to look at something like a uh, drill bit or pen or even a screwdriver. Then you've got something to cut your wire with. Some little snips out my kit. And then some cotton. It's much easier to use the sheet cotton. You'll see why later. So, without further ado, let's put all this stuff to one side and crack it open. Right, so you'll see on pretty much any coil, this will work on. This is a mesh pro. If you look down inside, you'll see there's the outer rim, then there's the coil. Then there's the cotton, then there's another rim, then there's some more cotton. Don't know if you can see that very well. But that's what we're playing with. So first of all, remove a bung. And it's important to notice, you've got one leg between the bung and the rubber. And then between the rubber and the outer shell, you've got another one. I know it's going to be the hardest bit. It's quite tight. So you need some pliers. Now, when you're doing this, it's really important not to bend it and not to skew your threads. And just be gentle and patient with it. It is literally just pushed in, but it's quite a tight fit. So you want to pull on one side, pull on another, and you just try to ease it out. But like I said, it is quite tight. And it's really important not to bend this flat. So I just speed this up a little bit so you can see. There you go. So now you can see we've got the outer shell. If you don't want to scratch and scuff the outer shell, I suggest putting a bit of uh, material around it, just like a ripped up t-shirt or a dishcloth or something. Wrap right around it, it'll just stop you from scratching as much. Now I can cast that aside for a second. Now if you love this is what I meant before, we've got the inner shell with a cotton wrapped around the outside. And then you've got your coil inside. Now if you pry the legs away from gripping we should just be able to pry that coil out. So you got, you got a nice thick wrap around that coil. Now you'll see that that we're in mesh coil. We're not going to use mesh. <clears throat> now, as well as it'd be much easier for me to use this, um, but I'm not going to use that because obviously, if you're using a second-hand coil, that won't be very beneficial to you at all. But it is important to notice how thin the materials are, and to realise they have been compressed. So, for the inner one you're looking at one of them that's been really compressed and you're looking at maybe one sheet maybe two 
the la uh, one layer, maybe two layers for the outer. So let's cast these aside. Next thing we want to use is our wire. I only got a little bit left. Could grab us pen. I've never used this pen before, so we'll just see if it fits. There, see, it fits quite nicely. Could do it a little bit tighter. But true for any RDA, any RTA, you want it to be nice and even. But you also don't want the coil at any longer than that so that might just be alright so the next thing we want to do put it back on your makeshift jig you want that one bent upward like so maybe a little bit more the reason you do it round your jig, while well, it's on your jig, is to stop you from skewing the coil. Uh, same with that one in the same direction. You want that bent down. So there you go. That's your coil build. The next thing we want to do is get your inner shell. Cut that off a bit. It's a bit long. You're gonna get your inner shell, put both wires in. Make sure it fits nice and snug. See it is a little bit wide on one side. But I'm just gonna carry on because I'm a trooper. Now we want one rep of this, about the same width of our, as our coil. So we're pretty much just where we're about to tear it. About there. See it fits on nice and snug, there's no coil exposed. To me that looks beautiful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to separate it in the middle. And then I'm going to bang the first bit under that bit leg. Just like that. What you're doing is you're separating that leg from the rest of the coil. You don't want that leg touching the coil. So there you go. And now if we just wrap it around nice and tight. I guarantee I will not be able to get this back in the case because it's too thick and no it is. Yeah, miles too thick. But that's okay because all we're gonna do got just half it out. So now if you look it goes straight under. It's not wrapped over and under. And wrap it nice and tight. There you go, just get your pen end and make sure there's a nice hole through. Put it in and you want all the coil, all the cotton in. You don't want any of it catching and staying out. Nice and tight. Get a bit of shimmying. If it need be, just fold it over. Now 
And you want to make sure, because what you see here is the top ring isn't in. So you just want to make sure that's in. I'm going to push that through to make sure it doesn't skew. In fact, that's actually pushing the coil in, which is nice. And now the coil's in, but like I just said, we don't want it to skew. So I'm just going to push that in and make sure there's a nice hole through. Just use my plier to clean it out. <coughs> so there you go, if you can see, pretty much a straight through coil. Up it is. <coughs> what else I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make sure my coil is exposed because if the coil is inside the cotton then it won't be able to cool down and it will just burn out really quick I can hear the coil banging onto the uh, screwdriver so I've done alright I can just gently pull away the excess cotton happy days Now the thickness of this from the rim, if you look here there's a rim, from the rim to the top which is a nice thin piece. It's always better to cut it too thick than too thin because obviously then you can always cut it down. Nice thin layer. And you just wrap that around nice and tightly. Ka-ching! I want to push that back in. Now this is a bit where I hurt my finger. So what you want to do is I got some long nose pliers. Some really long nose pliers. I just put it on like that. And this way you want to keep your fingers well away. Because if it slips you will hurt your finger. There you go, that's fully in. So the next thing you want to do is it doesn't matter which leg you use, so whichever's closest to the metal I'd use. So this one it's that one. So you want to put the one inside the rubber, one outside the rubber, and bend it over. If you notice there's a groove, it's best if the coil bends into that groove. Push the rubber in. At this moment in time, it doesn't really matter if it fits in perfectly or not. But then you want your other leg over that groove, like so. And then that just slots in to hold it all into place. Push it in nice and firm. Cut that off. And cut that off. Now it's going to get the tank. So this is a coil we've just built. Just gonna bang it in there. Get some liquid. Strawberry mango crush because it is lush. And we're just gonna saturate that cotton nice and well. And if at this point you see that your cotton's going into the middle again. Get an extra clean out. Like I said, your cotton should be on the edges there. Bring the top cap back on. No point three. I just burnt my coil out. Oops, a daisy. There you go. Like I said, it's not the best build because I didn't have much wire to hand. 
Um, but there is a few more reminders I want to run through. <clears throat> because I know that there's going to be a lot of you saying, it didn't work, I can't get to work. Or, it's a fake review, it won't work. And I've just had to rebuild that coil because I burnt mine out. And while I was doing that, it reminded me there's a few things I probably didn't click onto or remind you about. So if you're getting leaking, it's because the coil and... Oh, I'll just take it apart and show you. Now if you're getting lots of leaking, it's because the cotton between the coil and Now, if you're getting lots of leaking, it's because the cotton between the outer shell and the coil is too thin. Uh, if you're getting no atomizer, it's quite possible because the coil is touching this shell. You don't want that all the way up the coil. You only want it here. So make sure your cotton's firmly wrapped around the coil and there's no sneaky bits. Like, for example, if that bit there touched the top of that, it would possibly read no atomizer. Uh, Yada yada, so just take your time, wrap it properly. If you've got any questions, do feel free to ask, but please don't be like, oh, it just didn't work because I can't, we aren't looking at it, I don't know why it won't work. But in theory, as long as your coil is perfectly wrapped and nice and thick so the coil can't touch the outer shell, um, it should be alright. And like I said, remember to make sure that the coil on the inside is exposed. How I did that then is when I rewrapped it, I had my jig through the middle and then I rewrapped it round. And this will make sure that the fine bits inside the coil don't get covered until you take it out. Then I pushed it in, so I did that, and then I pushed it in. Um, and also remember to make sure that there's cotton separating the coil and the leg. Uh, other than that guys, it's pretty darn easy. Uh, and like I said, this should work on pretty much everything. So just give it a try. Good luck and stay cloudy!